Hello everyone and welcome to ITLS Academy Empower the Youth. So today in this lecture we will going to study about to study the microbial flora of meats and egg. So this topic is related to the microbial flora of meats and egg. So now let's get started with the topic and let's see the introduction part. So we all know that meat and its product are very or you can say very highly nutri uh, nutritious food as uh, it is widely consumed by different people all over the world. Meat can be obtained from various kind of birds like chicken, like turkey, duck etc. Or sometimes they are also available or you can say obtained by mammals like pork, mutton, buffalo, sheep and after slaughtering the primary cuts are you know processed to a raw or you can say processed food product means to obtain the meat of any uh, animal uh, the first step is slaughtering and after that uh, the uh, primary cut is made the uh, they are processed to a raw or you can say processed, uh, processed food product so it is very nutritious it have a very high protein uh, content in it or you simply can say they are very rich in protein and they are highly perishable and have a very short period of time or you can say short shelf life so uh, here i am using two words that is highly perishable and have a short shelf life so Perishable means they have a more water content in themselves. Okay, so whenever there is a more moisture content or you can say water content, so they allow the in uh, allow microorganism to grow because microorganism need water. The most favorable condition for any microorganism to grow to multiply is water. So meat since they can they have a very short period of time why life because uh, because of the water content that is there because their water content is very much high so that make them uh, highly perishable and thus lead to a very short shelf life so the biological and chemical nature of meat they leads to its deterioration from time to uh, time of slaughtering until the consumption means um, the time the um, animal gets slaughtered up to uh, the animal further the, the meat of the animal further get consumption so their biological and chemical nature of the meat it leads to the deterioration meat and its products such as ham sausages cooked meat or you can say dry meat smoked meat vacuum packed meat mice minced meat etc all are susceptible to the microbial spoilage okay here i am using one term that is microbial spoilage so of course the spoilage that is caused by different types of microorganism it's known as microbial spoilage so here again the spy, uh, spoilage can be caused by two factor the first factor is the uh, uh, you can say simply say there are two types of spoilages in the meat the first is spoilage under aerobic condition and second is the spoilage uh, under anaerobic condition so if we talk about the spoilage of meat in detail so the fresh meat they are subjected to spoilage how by its enzyme and microbial action so the autolysis uh, changes uh, causes prolytic action on muscles and of course on the connective tissue and further they are hydrolyzing in and uh, the hydrolysis of the fat so these all factors can cause the spoilage in the meat so it is because of the enzymatic action then there is a microbial action so microbial action says the survival and the growth of microorganisms they are influenced by the consumption of uh, the atmosphere surrounding the meat so meat 
where it is placed or you can say the surrounding atmosphere so the composition of surrounding atmosphere uh, that is surrounding the meat they also influence the growth of microorganisms so the fresh meat it contains nutrients such as sugar amino acid vitamins certain cofactor and uh, if i write it here on the blank uh, screen so you must know that uh, came to know that a fresh meat so if we talk about the ph of the fresh meat so the ph is uh, uh, from 5 to 5 uh, 5.5 to 5.9 okay so in between this the ph of the fresh meat is if we talk about the water activity okay i am just erasing this if we just talk about the water activity means this of a meat then it is 0.85 pos 0.85 so these are the um, uh, things that influence the growth of microorganism so the most common um, uh, among the microorganism uh, uh, is a bacteria that is isolated from the fresh meat um, like uh, acinobacter is there pseudomonas is there and uh, staphylococci is there lactic acid bacteria so um, and other type of other microorganisms are also there but the most common are these so the microbial pathogens they are uh, the microbial pathogen um, that are found in the fresh meat are salmonella e coli campylobacter okay so these are certain types of uh, uh, microbial pathogens that are associated uh, with the my, uh, fresh meat so i think you are now familiar with the introduction part now let's quickly understand what is our aim of today's experiment so the today's aim of experiment is to study the microbial flora of meats and egg so the theory says meats and egg are the most perishable of all the important foods because of the presence of sample amount of nutrient uh it's not sample i think it's ample amount of nutrient it is something uh, ample amount of nutrients that are required for the growth of bacteria yeast uh, and molds so i have already uh, told you in our introduction part that it is mold m u l d mold so uh, i have already already told you that meat is the hub of nutrients okay there are various type of nutrients that are present in the meat and each nutrient is helping uh, the microorganism to grow okay so because of the presence of these important nutrient in the meat they they um, allow the growth of different types of pathogens in the meat if the pathogens um, can uh, easily grow in the meat because of its uh, perishable nature so they what they do they deteriorate the quality of the meat uh products moreover these nutrients are available in more available form it ha it has also been pointed out during the slaughter dressing cutting microorganism chiefly from the exterior of animal and its intestinal tract but the more added from knives cloth and ear workers so uh, one thing to understand here that microorganism as we all know that this microorganism is present everywhere whether it is in the environment or whether a person who is slaughtering the meat everywhere microorganism is present okay so yes of course uh, the uh, the nutrient uh, that is present in the meat uh also promote the growth of microorganism but other factors are also there that may uh, you can say that also promote the growth of microorganism for example whenever you are ready to slaughter an animal so you need a knife so sometimes if the knife is not washed properly uh, so there are thousands and thousands of microorganisms that are there on the surface of the knife so if you slaughter the animal with the same knife that is not properly clean so microorganism can get uh, entry inside the uh, animal body okay 
now again the cloth air the workers means the worker who is slaughtering uh, doing the slaughtering of animal or the worker who will going to you know uh, is handling the further uh, meat pro uh, meat parts so they may also deteriorate or you can say uh, they can also deteriorate the quality of the meat how because if the worker is not pro uh, wearing proper clothes if he is not properly sanitized then the microorganism from that person can transfer to the meat so it is very important whenever you are slaughtering whenever you are slaughtering any animal okay so the environmental conditions or you can say the uh, slaughtering area should be properly cleaned and sanitized just to avoid the presence of bacteria it is very important the cleanliness means if the if the area is clean so there is hardly any chance of, of uh, the microbial contamination so meat is a food stuff that can spoil very quickly with certain types of species of bacteria since bacteria have a capability of multiplying very easily on the fresh meat what is the reason i have told you because of its chemical composition because of its water activity because of the ph value okay so the initial microbial population on the meat uh, is depending upon the uh, a few factors that is first is the physiological state of the animal at the moment it is slaughtered slaughtered the level of environmental uh, contamination in the slaughterhouse and the last is the area in which the subsequent handling of the meat is performed means it includes the level of hygiene of the employees and the tool and equipment so similarly uh, with the case of the equipment from where uh, uh, where you will put the cut pieces of the meat means the equipment so the equipment should also be washed properly as to avoid the cross contamination and and this is the main factors so one thing just wanted to address here that a great variety of kind of organisms are added so that it can assume that under the ordinary condition most kind of potential spoilage organisms are present and it will grow able to grow if the favorable condition present themselves most common organisms responsible for meat spoilage are bacteria mold yeast respectively bacteria most often in, involved in spoilage are acidinobacter campylobacter enterococcus salmonella shirata clostridium etc with respect to the fungal agent involved mucor penicillium rhizopus canidia and cladosporium so apart from this if i write it here that all bacteria that cause meat spoilage are soluble compound soluble compound means they contain in the muscle tissue for their growth especially uh, particularly if you can say glyco uh, glucose and amino acid so the preferred substrate uh, generally is glucose for uh, for bacteria for bacteria the preferred you can say uh, uh, preferred substrate is generally glucose that is present in the muscles okay so when the glucose ceases to be available so the bacteria what they do they begin to attack amino acid and a large quantity of amine uh, ammonia and lesser amount of organic sulfites and amine they causes the unpleasant smells and this unpleasant smell when it release they uh, they are um, they are known as uh, the uh, um, uh, deterioration of the meat that uh, this lead to the deterioration of meat and the offensive uh, putrefaction is generally associated with the growth of bacteria growing in the absence of oxygen and producing the endol or you can say hydrogen sulfide and how they are uh, uh, doing this from by the decomposition of proteins and amino acid so these are certain things that are associated with the uh, bad of uh, or you can say of smell of the meat 
now moving to the next that is material required in this so uh, to uh, to study this uh, 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 microbial flora of meats and egg then the what are the material required so you required um, a meat uh, raw meat sample 2.2 22.5 ml saline 9 ml saline and um, you required plate count agar that is pca malt extract agar that is mea oxford perfringens agar bacillus cerisius cerisius agar uh, then you have uh, vrbga that is 4 ml overlay molten and sterile sterile petri dishes peptide of 0.5 uh, sorry 0.1 and 1 ml automatic plus trip uh, tips glass rod spreader plus alcohol so all these material are required whenever you are identifying or you can say demonstrating this um, uh, microbial flora of meat and x now let us understand what is uh, what is the full form of v r b v r b g a so i am just writing the full form here you can note it down some here so v for violet okay then r for red b for again uh, i think the space is i am just writing over here v for violet r for red b for bile and g for glucose and a for agar a for and a for agar okay so this is the full form of v r b g a so v b r g a is uh, violet red bile glucose agar so basically it is used to detect the detect uh, and enumerate the enterobacteriaceae in food and dairy product that is in uh, meat an egg product and what is the use of uh, 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 this agar so the basically a use of agar again to detect the presence of different types of uh, uh, bacteria or you can say the, uh, they are used to enumeration uh, used for the enumeration of uh, coliforms or enterobacteriaceae in um, the meat and uh, uh, egg products okay now let us move further what is the procedure okay so you, for the procedure point of view you have to take the uh, take the number of uh, sub samples from different parts of the meat and eggs including areas known to be subject of contamination or particularly favorable for microbial growth so for this uh, you need to have certain uh, samples that you should uh, that you will be going to take from the raw milk uh, sorry raw meat and egg uh, especially including the areas that are more favorable for the microbial growth then you use the sterile swab and templates for taking surface swab sample so why you are taking the sterile swab sterile sterile means a swab that is free from any source of microbial contamination so you take that and um, uh, with the, for by taking the uh, with the help of this you take uh, the surface swab sample then you moisten the first swab with the sterile peptone water then you use the uh, for sterile uh, peptone water and why you, you are using this sterile peptone water to swab the or you can say moisten the first swab 
then you do the and then rub firmly across the exposed area several time in the in all the direction so you should you will going to rub it and um, uh, across the means the area that is exposed area and you do it uh, with all the direction means in all the direction then you use the second swab and dry as uh, though the first uh, swab you have taken now it's the time to take the second swab dry and rub over the same area now by using the second swab you have to rub and uh, over the same area bilkul waise jaise aapne first swab ke sath kiya tha then introduce both swab into the bottle containing 3 to 4 glass blends and appropriate known volume of diluents example 0.1% peptone and 0.9% nacl then you have to shake this very gently uh, vigorously why uh, uh, this shaking is done because uh, otherwise direct cut small uh, uh, vigorously is done so that it could be mixed properly and uh, otherwise uh, if you don't want to do this then you have the second option is otherwise directly cut small pieces of meat uh, yolk and add it to the sterile diluent okay this is the sampling now the second is plating then how you will do plating so microbial flora of raw meat meat analyze two analyze two different raw meat check whether agar plate needs pre drying or not so before taking the uh, firstly you have to take the agar plate and you have to check whether this agar plate needs pre drying or not then you have to weigh uh in the weighing machine 2.5 grams of raw meat provided into the stomacher bag and add to 22.5 ml of saline now you are uh, you are just thinking what is a stomacher stomacher bag so stomacher bag it uh, is a type of a bag that is used to uh, or you can say suitable for samples uh, that uh, uh, that basically produce a very large amount of debris okay such as meat so you have to use um, then you have to weigh um, 2.5 grams of the raw meat and you have to put it into the stomacher bag and add 22.5 ml of saline then after doing this um, then uh, you have to do the dilution of this Uh, this is 10 to the, to the power minus 1 dilution then homogenize using the stomacher for 30 seconds then you have to further hom homogenize this then allow the large particle to settle means in uh, that what i have told you about the stomacher bag that is it is only uh, that is it is suitable for the sample that uh, that produces a large amount of debris fat or harder sample um uh, okay so uh, this stomacher bag what it is doing so uh, after the homogenization is done um, in the stomacher bag for 30 seconds then they allow the large particle to settle down means the fatty materials will float into the uh, surface to the uh, float to, to the surface and you have to then dilute your sample in 9 uh, ml uh, sterile saline up to 10 to the power 8 uh, minus 8 dilution then comes the spread plate inoculation then you have to dis uh, dispense 0.1 ml of each dilution uh, onto the surface of the dried plate uh, that is um, plate count agar that is pca and uh, malt extract agar that is mea and bacillus cereus agar so now the third procedure is the pour plate inoculation so you you have to take the peptide 1 ml of each dilution into eight petri dishes means you have to take eight petri dishes then you have to pipe it 1 ml of each dilution in those eight uh, petri dishes then you have to add 20 ml molten tryptose and uh, you have to add uh, um, sulfite cyclosirine agar that is also known as perfinjins agar 
and you have to carefully swir uh, swir to mix the sample then you have to pipe it 1 ml of each dilution into 8 petri dishes this is not i i have just by mistakely it has been written here so but it is the petri is 1 ml okay in in spite of this so i it is written but it is 1 ml of each dilution and then what you have to do you uh, you have already taken the eight petri dishes then after that to one ml of each dilution you have to put a, a pipette into the each each petri dish and you have to add approx 20 uh, ml molten vrbga that is violet red <coughs> bile glucose agar then here one thing is to note that this will need a 4 ml of uh, vrbga overlay uh, incubate the plates aerobically at 30 degree centigrade uh, centigrade so what should be the incubation period so the uh, sorry temperature the incubation temperature is 37 degree 8 except for the tsca agar which is to be incubated anaerobically and mea which is to be incubated at 25 degree centigrade so here we have uh, already known that studied that we have taken the two agar plate that is the uh, uh, dried plate agar count that is pca and a malt extract agar that is mea so here uh, the the first agar is uh, means and the plate is incubated at the at uh, uh, at the temperature of 37 degrees centigrade aerobically and um, but in case of tsca that agar it should be uh, inoculated uh, anaerobically in the absence of oxygen and further you have to take mea agar which is to be incubated at 25 degree centigrade aerobically then what is the observation then after completing the procedure it's time for observation then for the observation you have to arrange the plate in order to the lowest to highest dilution so how to arrange the plate a plate from lowest to highest dilution then you have to count the number of colonies on the plate then after counting the number of colonies onto the plate and that have colonied from 30 to 300 then you have to dis, uh, design it plate with fewer or than 30 colonies as to few uh, uh, to the count and the plate more than 300 colonies as 100 numerous to count then further you have to calculate the average amount of bacteria per gram of sample now here what you have to do you have to take the average number means the average number of bacteria per gram of uh, per gram of sample is to be calculated so what is the formula for that so the number of bacterial gram that is number of colonies that is dilution factor into weight sa weight sample so this is the number of bacterial count so uh, what is the formula so uh, simply uh, i'm just writing the formula here uh, just uh, uh, means the average number of bacteria per gram of the sample can be calculated as a uh, number of bacteria okay i'm just writing bacteria in uh, short form per gram okay is equal to is equal to number of colonies upon number of colonies about uh, upon df means dilution factor what is this d, uh, dl uh, df means it is a dilution factor into weight of sample okay so that i have written here number of colonies upon dilution factor into weight of sample so this is the formula for uh, calculating the average number of bacteria per gram of sample then after uh, you are with the help of this formula uh, now you have to make a uh, 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 the observation ta table like this then you have to record in this table 
the number of colonies per plate and you have to write it on the, uh, here like this in this manner this is dilution and this is the number of colonies per plate and here you have to interpret your result you have to tell the result so if uh, in simple word if if we say that bacteria uh, sorry this spoilage of meat um, it is uh, because of the external as well as the internal factors okay so now that's bring to the end of the lecture let's quickly understand once again that what all we have covered so far in this so in this lecture we have just covered the uh, what is microbial spoilage and what are the main types of uh, microbial spoilage that is associated with the um, uh, the meat and egg products and um, yes uh, main uh, type of bacteria we have already covered so if you have any doubt any queries related to the lecture you can simply leave your queries in the uh, comment section below uh, in the next lecture i will be answering all the queries thank you for watching please do like share and subscribe thank you